In this short, reasonably specialised talk, we're going to have a look at one particular type of firing solution. So what we are thinking about here is a situation where we have an AI-controlled character that is going to release uh, like an arrow from a bow and arrow or to fire a cannonball or something like that. So it is a projectile that is, is imparted with an initial amount of force and is then subject to gravitation uh, or, or to gravi a gravitational force that will pull it down towards the ground. And we want to consider a range of different things uh, in terms of working out um, where it's going to land, in terms of working out if we want to hit a particular location, which angle or direction we should fire the thing in. So there's this, this is a yeah, it's really reasonably niche area, uh, but that, that's what we'll be looking at within this particular uh, lecture. So it assumes projectiles uh, that are imparted with initial velocity and then gravity uh, affects it thereafter. So what we're not looking at here are instances where there isn't gravity, where in this case it's just simple, you fire it in a certain direction with a certain speed, that's the way that it moves. It doesn't also include powered projectiles like rockets that will uh, try to sort of continue or sustain their overall um, velocity. Now, we're going to look at the equation that describes the overall motion, and from that equation we'll be able to solve it in different ways. Uh, so if I shoot something, I can use the equation to work out where it will land, Conversely, if I want to hit a target, I can then say, OK, I can solve the question to work out the angle in which I should fire it to hit that. So there we, we're dealing with situations either where we have an AI-controlled character that wants to target something, or an AI-controlled character that's looking at a projectile and asking, is this going to hit me? Where is it going to land? And then deciding to take some evasive action um, if need be. So it's quite a flexible setup. It'll all call, come from the one equation describing the overall motion. In terms of that equation, uh, we'll, we'll get straight to it. Uh, so it is shown here. And it this probably looks more scary than the thing really is. Uh, we'll break this down. In essence, is this will simply break down into three different parts, and all of the different parts will make sense. So we'll start off uh, left hand side PT. PT is the position of the projectile at time t. Uh, so t, t is our time variable. So if t is equal to zero, this is the starting position. This is where at time is equal to zero, the projectile is. That's where we fire it from. If pt, if t is equal to one, that is the position of the particle after one second. Uh, if t is equal to two, then that's the position of the particle after two seconds. So this, this will describe for a given point in time where we'll find that projectile. Now, what's that comprised of? It's comprised of the initial position, so P0 is where we actually launch the projectile from in the first place. That's important to know. The second component, D, SFT, is simply the movement uh, due to the normal velocity of the projectile. So we have a look at the components. So D, say over here, is the initial direction of firing. So that's the angle in which we fire it. SF is the speed of firing. So if we take a direction, of movement and combine it with the speed, that's the velocity. So DESF is basically the velocity that the particle or the projectile has, and T then takes into account, well, how long has it been moving uh, with that, uh, in that particular direction with that particular speed? So obviously, if, if, if T is equal to zero, then that component goes to zero. If T is equal to one, then that's one second's worth of velocity that's been, uh, or movement due to the velocity has been imparted, and so on. The third component, um, because we, we have gravity, gravity is an accelerative force, so gravity will, will give it a downward velocity, and that velocity will increase over time, and that will change then the position increasingly so. So it's really sort of a half at squared, but the, the acceleration in this case is just gravity. So we have basically a half of gravity uh, times t uh, squared, so because it, it's an accelerative force. So G is our gravitational uh, vector, and that's the movement due to gravity. If we look at this, you, you can see that the initial position is fixed, doesn't change. The movement due to firing just depends upon the time, and it scales linearly with the time. Uh, and then the movement due to gravity depends upon the time squared. So it will become the dominant term as, as gravity acts to um, bring it down faster and faster overall. Now, one thing to note about this equation, um, if you view it in terms of t's, 
you have a t squared component, which is our half gravity. You have a t component, which is our velocity. And you have just an ordinary fixed number, which is our initial position. And that's where you have um, something expressed as a, as, a, as a t squared plus a t plus an ordinary constant. That's a quadratic equation. And we'll be able then to use the sort of very famous uh, equation for solving quadratic equations to solve this particular one. Um, we'll see that in the next slide. Just an aside there, gravity uh, on, on Earth at sea level is roughly 9.81 metres per second per second. You can use that value if you want in the game, but it'll probably look too slow. So you, you, you pick a bigger value, you pick something that looks natural in terms of being able to play the game. Now, let's say we, we accept the equation we have there. We now want to solve that equation in different ways. So that's what we're going to go on to next. And we'll solve it first of all for looking at the position in which it's going to hit the ground, its landing position. And we'll start off with the aside that we have first of all. So if we have a quadratic equation, and the general form of quadratic equation is ax squared plus bx plus c. So we have a, a squared term, we have a, just an ordinary x term, and we have a fixed constant. And in our case, the, the a was a half of gravity, the b was the velocity, and the c was the initial starting position. Then given uh, an equation expressed in that way, if we want to solve it for a certain value, in this case equal to zero, the two roots, as you can see at the bottom, uh, are minus b, uh, plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac over 2a. So that's the standard way of being able to solve these equations. And that rather yucky looking thing that you see at the top is basically where we've taken the, the, the basic form within the aside and we've plugged in the values. So for us, b is our velocity, so we have our basically minus the velocity. A is half of the acceleration and C is the initial position and we're plugging those things in uh, to the equation. Now, we can then solve that equation. Now, we have to solve it for a, a certain value and uh, in this case we would be looking at a certain Y value, which is our height value. And I'm going to assume uh, in this here we're solving it for a height value of zero, where zero we're, we're assuming is our floor height. Now, you can plug in different values if you want, if you wanted to have a, a certain height or the floor height was a different one, but zero is the assumed value that we're using within this. So we're going to try to solve this equation for a y value of zero, and that will then represent when the projectile notionally is at, is at ground height. For uh, quadratic equations, uh, there can be a number of different solutions. In particular, there can be, uh, in terms of real solutions, as opposed to imaginary solutions, zero, one, or two real solutions. If there's zero solutions, that means that it never hits the target height. So, for example, if, if I notionally said I wanted to have a height of 10, and I want to work out, okay, when does it reach a height of 10, um, and I plug the things in, and my b squared minus 4ac is, 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 is a negative number. I can't take the square root of the negative number and get a real number. Uh, so in that case, there's no solutions, and what that means is I never reach a height of 10, never manages that. If there's one solution, and this happens when b squared minus 4ac is exactly zero, what that means then is that it just touches the maximum height or the height that I'm looking for. At the apex of its, of its travel, it touches it, then it falls down. And normally, uh, certainly if we plug things in correctly, we'll have two solutions. In that case, it represents when it hits it going up and then when it hits it going down on the other side. Uh, so we want to plug the thing in this here and then we're going to use the value uh, to work out what we get from it. Uh, generally speaking, if we get two real solutions, we're not interested in when it reached it going up, we're interested in when it reached it going down. So we will take the later of the two real solutions as to when eventually it, 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 it comes down and it hits our, our target height. So we can simply plug those into the equation uh, because we, we know we have the, the particular solution and if we enter the things in, uh, simply plug it in, you will get what you're sh uh, as shown as here. Um, so substituting it in to the equation, this is the general form that we can see. I'll, I'll show you the side at the bottom which is probably the more relevant one. Uh, generally speaking, uh, okay, it's three dimensions, if two dimensions just the x and the y. And notionally or normally, gravity is only in the y direction, so we can ignore the x component from it. 
Doing that, if you have a look at the aside, that's the particular equation we would use. So if we want to work out the x position for a given y position, for example, a y height of 0, then you can plug the thing in, as you can see down there, where we would solve it for the particular time, get the largest time value, plug it in, and that will give us then the uh, location at which it will actually hit the, the ground. So reasonably um, straightforward. If we want it then to swap this the other way around, and to say that, OK, I'm not interested in where it's going to land, uh, which you might be if you're trying to avoid the thing. I'm more interested in how do I direct it so that I can hit a certain target location. So in this case, the target location is fixed. It'll be the fixed term. Um, but the thing I could vary, well, I've got a couple of choices. I could either vary the direction in which I shoot it, or I could vary the speed with which I release it. And um, normally it's the direction that's varied. So for example, if it's a cannonball, it'll be a fixed speed, you just change the direction. Arguably for things like a bow and arrow, you could control both the direction and the speed. But here we're just going to assume it's, it's, it is the direction is the variable we will control. Again, for doing this, uh, they're normally, um, well, it depends if it's set up properly, but it's a quadratic equation. There can be two solutions to this. Uh, you'll often have a short-term trajectory, which is a shorter-term one, where it reaches there faster, you fire it at a more sort of bleak angle, and a longer-term trajectory where you shoot it up in the air and eventually it comes down and hits it. Normally, you prefer the shorter-term trajectory, the one that gets there quickest, uh, though if you had a level where you know there's lots of things in the middle, uh, you may want to shoot it up high so that it goes above those. But in the equation the next slide, I'm, I'm going to, um, or the, 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 the pseudo code, I'm going to assume we're looking for the quicker path that will get us there. So in terms of the, the algorithm that we're going to use, I'll, I'll show it now as expressed as some pseudo code. In essence, we're solving exactly the same thing we did before, our, our normal quadratic equation, uh, plugging in the values. So A, just as a reminder, was half of gravity. B uh, was our velocity, and C was our initial um, position. Where in this case, it's, it's the B term, it's the velocity component, is the thing that we want to change, change the direction. So here we have a method, calculate firing solution. We'll pass into this the start location. We'll pass into this our desired target location that we're going to try to hit. We'll pass in gravity, and we'll pass in the speed with which I will fire it. And from this, I will try to return a vector. And if I can calculate a vector, it'll be the vector that controls, or it embodies the speed, but also the direction of travel. And the reason I say I'll try to return a vector is that I might call this method to say I'm here in my start location, here's my target location, and depending on my target location, I may never be able to hit it. It may be too far away. Uh, so in that case, I'll not be able to return any meaningful vector. So the vector question mark basically means it's a nullable element that you may not be able to hit that particular target. I just want to have some way of, of representing that outcome. So what we're going to do within this, we'll, we'll work out a few things. So we'll work out start minus n. This is the, the distance that I need to cover, or rather the projectile needs to cover. I'll then calculate the a, the b, and the c. These are the elements that we have within our quadratic equation. And you can see there we're, we're, we're calculating out the different bits of it. Um, the large dot is actually a dot product, and that's um, basically an easy way of multiplying these two things together. Uh, dot product two vectors, you take the x components of the vectors, multiply them together. You take the y components of the vectors, multiply them together. If you had z components, you would do the same. And then you add all of those different uh, multiples together, and that gives you the overall uh, combined one, which is the dot product. So work at a, work at b, work at c. Then we're checking here to see, do we have any real solutions? So we won't have, so if b squared um, is, if 4ac is bigger than b squared, this will give us a negative number, which we'll try to take the square root of. So in that sense, no real solutions, we return null. This represents the case where we can't actually hit our target location. If we can, uh, if that uh, if doesn't trigger, it means we can hit our target um, solution. So in this case, then we work out our two times, t1 and t2, that we can use, again, plugging them into the equation that we have at the bottom. The bit that follows after this, then, is looking at those times. Um, 
a time may be less than one. And this, this is because we're, we're dealing with a, I mean, a basic parabola in terms of the, the equation. Uh, and you might need to go notionally backwards in time that if you were to project backwards, you would hit the target location at that particular point. So we're not interested in negative times. So we're only interested in positive times, uh, zero onwards. So the logic here basically says if we only have negative times or if we have one negative time, but we're ignoring them. And we're only looking at positive times. And if we do have positive times, we'll return the minimum positive time, the one that will get there more quickly. Final bit at the end says, OK, we've worked out the time, uh, the, the minimum positive time that will enable us to reach the target. And then we plug into that the actual, uh, we know all the other components in terms of the start, the end, the speed. So we simply plug it in then to work out what direction uh, will, will give us that for that particular uh, target time. And that is then what we return at the, the very end as our overall velocity. So it's reasonably, um, it is reasonably straightforward. We're just simply manipulating the equation to, to different ends. Only one takeaway in this here that, um, again, we're scratching the surface, but if you do have uh, bows and arrows, cannonballs, those types of things, and you want to have your AI work out, am I going to be hit or how do I fire things, then what we looked at here more or less uh, covers the core um, equation and, and algorithm that you would want to use.